Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka show. Are you ready for another story about life in Soviet Union? I hope you do. But before we start another uh, part about uh, Soviet schools, I would like to say thank you to my patrons who support my channel through patreon.com. Thank you so much Sam, Steven, Taylor, Marianne and Craig for your support. It's greatly appreciated. And now I'll start the story about me going to school. It's kind of strange, but I still remember pretty well that day of September 1st, 1978, the day I went to school for the very first time. As I said in my previous video, September 1st was always the first day of school, except when it was on the weekend. And that was the f famous day of knowledge. Of course, that time I was very excited because for a kid, it's kind of like a big step forward from a kid, you become a pupil, Skolnik. Um, and that day my dad took me to school and I kind of tried to calculate it. It seems like from September till May, starting going to school for six days a week, it was approximately 200 days in a year that I attended school, which means 10 years of 200 days. So that was my first day of next 2000 days of schooling. But I was excited because as I became a pupil. Of course, later on, uh, as every other normal kid, I wasn't happy about going to school. But that day I was very excited. Uh, my dad walked me to school, which was pretty close. And you could see that on this map. And um, we only had, I believe, only three or four lessons. Our school finished early, around noon. And my dad met me again by the school. And he told me that he overheard the, like, a high schoolers chatting, and that they envy for the kids who just went to school today for the very first time, первоклассники, first graders, because they um, finished school so early. And I was chuckling, was very, I found it funny. But later I remember myself thinking the same thing, like, oh, those lucky first schoolers, they only have uh, school for a short period of time and they're done by noon. So for the next 2000 days of school in Kiev, I always walk to school and from school, except for the short period of time in third grade, when we moved early spring, but I had to finish the third grade in my uh, school number 69. So I had to take a public transportation to get from a new apartment back to the old area where we used to live and attend the school. Otherwise, I forgot to mention in the previous video, we did not have school buses. I was totally not familiar to this whole thing of school buses and school busing and all the additional uh, rules how the driver is supposed to act, you know, you have to stop and start blinking yellow and then red light, everyone has to stop. It was totally unfamiliar territory for me as a driver. Well, I never drove back in Ukraine. Uh, my parents never owned a car. I never owned a car. And we never had school buses. So it was a business of walking to school and from school. And in fact, when my mother was attending school back in the village, uh, her village had only school that covered from first to eighth grade. And if you remember from my previous video, eighth grade, it was kind of like a cutoff. Nine and ten was a high school. So she had to go to different village. I won't say next door, but it was uh, about maybe three or four miles away. Uh, so she had to walk with her friends every day to the other village to attend the school and then walk back. And no matter rain or shine, snow or uh, rain, uh, she had to walk. There were no school buses in the village also. I found a picture of me in the third grade. So this is 1981 photo and I'm uh, finishing the third grade. And if you see this picture, you could see a little bit of my uniform. And I already have a red um, tie around my neck. So I already became a pioneer. So the first grade, I became Aktibrionak, the October kid, which was the first and second grade. And somewhere in the middle of the third grade, I joined the pioneers 
and started wearing uh, this red uh, galstuk red tie and there's another picture it's also third grade this is my class and it's total of 41 kids and you can see our teacher Irina Vasilyevna on the background and further in the background school is actually on the left and on the far back that's the standard nine-story high apartment building that we had thousands and millions probably all over the Soviet Union and in Kiev as well. So there's my teacher in the background and I will let you try to find me. And as you see, uh, we have kind of like a prasnichna form, I don't know how to say it in English, but all the girls are wearing this white um, shirts. So that's kind of like a celebrating kind of uniform, prasnichna forma, and we we're wearing white shirts with our suits, so that uh, would be like more like official for, uh, form. And most of the kids are pioneers. So you can imagine one teacher for 41 kids. So it's really hard to have like a personal attention to each kid, right? And I said there was a pretty much a play up system where a teacher was mostly concentrating on uh, kids who were advancing well through classes and the rest was just coming along for a ride. So we had approximately maybe out of this 41 uh, kid, we had approximately maybe 10 or so the ones that were getting excellent grades and good grades. Then we had a big pack of middle, uh, like Troyeshniki, and then a couple of kids who were really struggling through school. And I remember there's one of these kids, even in the third grade, he had like really hard time reading. He was really slow, but still he was attending a regular class and going to school with us. And he probably, in eighth grade, he left the school and became a worker or something like that. So let's take a look together what uh, did the kids in the first grade of the Soviet school were studying. I actually found my Dnivnik. So this is like a day planner. Um, so that's a 1978-1979 uh, study year. And it's actually, as I said, I was in Ukraine, but this is a day. This day planner is actually uh, printed on Russian language. And there's the rules about how to keep the this day planner. It tells you that uh, in the beginning of the year, the pupil is supposed to fill up the cover and put his name. Uh, then he daily is supposed to write down his homeworks, like what he's supposed to do. And they should be placed in the area for that specific day when it needs to be done. Then when the teacher uh, gives you a grade, a tsenku, so the teacher has his own called class um, journal. And that's what the, she puts the grades. And also at the same time, she's supposed to put the same grade in the day planner and sign it. And you could see this on this photo. There's my grades and the signature of the teacher. And interestingly, the teacher was uh, always using red pen. So you could tell where the pupil are writing and where the teachers. The teacher's grades were always and signatures were always in red uh, uh, pen. Now also the rule number four that uh, now besides the teacher we have this uh, thing called like a class leader. So one of the teachers will be in charge of the specific class and he's a class nerukavaditel. So he will be like class manager I would say. And in the first, second, and third grade we had this Irina Vasilina, she was our teacher and also she was our class manager. So she was doing both things. Later, we'll have a lot of different teachers covering different subjects, but one of them will be assigned to our class as a class manager. So class manager, she's supposed to uh, trace and track and make sure that this day planner being correctly capped by pupil. And in the end of each week, uh, uh, she or he will mark how many lessons the pupil missed because he was sick or something like that. And uh, so number five, it says that 
any comments about uh, pupils uh, act like his attitude or how he was acting up or doing creating some troubles there has a specific spot where the teacher is supposed to write it and sign uh, rule number six and the end of each week uh, parents supposed to uh, to check their kids uh, day planner and sign it so verify the, yes I checked uh, my kid progress for this last week and also the rule number seven that all the notes in this uh, day planner should be uh, neatly written and making look everything good. So it looks like uh, in the beginning of my school days, like starting from September 11, my mother was actually f put in the schedule and later I started doing it. And uh, so let's see. The schedule was basic and you see we had four lessons a day. At that time, later there'll be five and six, because there's the room. And you could tell this day planner was already designed for six school days. So starting from Monday, and they go all the way to Saturday. Uh, so for example, Monday, September 11, the first class was Chtenia reading. The uh, second one was called Pismo, which is like uh, kids uh, learning how to write. Uh, penmanship. Then math will be no lesson number three. And the fourth lesson uh, will be changing each day. So first three looks like they were the same every day. We had reading, then writing, then math. Otherwise the number four on Monday was uh, truth, which is labor. So that was some kind... I don't recall honestly what we've been doing in first grade is the labor training but that's what it was on schedule. I think will be later. They'll be you know learning how to fix things with a hammer, and girls be learning how to cook. But I think it was like eighth grade, and we started doing it eight and seven. Um, on Tuesday we had risavania, which is drawing. So we were drawing different pictures. Um, on Wednesday was fiscultura, physical education. So we'll go to gym. Thursday again we have Trud, again we got labor education, uh, then Friday the fourth activity again, uh, Fiscultura, physical education, and on Saturday the last uh, lesson number four will be singing. So this is how the, what the kids were studying in the beginning of their uh, school days, very first uh, months of the school. And then, as they men we mentioned earlier, on the bottom of the page, you have a spot for the teacher to write different comments, and then place for his signature and place for my parents' signature. And here, there's the page with my probably very first bad grade. Uh, if you remember, five is excellent, four is good, three is satisfactory, and two is failed. And I assume I probably got this too because I forgot to bring my uniform. And looks like maybe my mother forgot to write on that day that we had a physical education and I didn't bring my uniform and as a result teacher gave me unsatisfactory grade, which is very sad. Now we're jumping into February of 1979, so several months uh, later, after New Year, this is my handwriting. So as you see, of course, we all learn how to write cursive. And now I'm filling uh, pages by myself in my day planner. And also I have uh, homeworks. So for example, it tells you what pages to read for the Russian language, and what uh, tasks to perform um, for the math and uh, stuff like that and of course in the end of the each week there will be поведение uh, which you kind of can like how you behaved during the week and uh, my parents were pretty mean they always wanted to, for me to have five excellent and if i had even four i could be in trouble so this is how uh, 
the day planner of the first grader look like? The main challenge for me personally in the first grade was the fact that I'm a left-handed person and that created big trouble because, and it's interesting, I recall using the ink pens in the first grade, but looking at my stuff, all I see is actually a ball pen. But anyway, since I was left-handed, I was uh, trying to write with the left hand. So my teacher asked my mother to help to switch me to the right hand. And so of course it was very challenging. So every time I'll be sitting home doing homework, especially practicing uh, penmanship and writing cursive, like you could see on these pictures, my mom will sit next to me at the desk at the table at home uh, holding a ruler. So I'll be writing and every time I try to switch a pen from the right hand to the left hand, she will gently smack me on the hand, makes me switch back. And when I tell this story to my wife, she's just simply horrified how it's possible, how you can be so mean. But a teacher actually asked my mother and like other parents who kids were lefties, that please help me, we need to switch your kid to the right hand because you know, if you write with the left hand, the way we write, we kind of tend to smudge the fresh ink. And be honest, I'm thankful to my mother that she helped me to switch to the right hand because now I can easily write with either hand. I can write with the right hand and I have a really neat handwriting. Uh, and I can write with the uh, left hand also as the right hand. And later in school, that was my th way of showing off. I will just stay in the middle of the blackboard and I will just start writing with the left hand and I switch chalk to my right hand and I'll be just writing like that. And it was always, I could impress girls with that skill. And here we're looking at my um, practicing of uh, penmanship. So that'll be the way that shows you preprinted how to write different letters. And then it's your homework to copy it and make it exact size and exact angle. And then of course, teacher will give you grades. So this is the big deal. Uh, said when my daughter, uh, Sasha, she's lefty. So when I told my wife that let's switch it to the right hand, she just said, there's no way in the world we're doing it. And I feel bad because I always, every time I see my daughter or somebody else writing with the left hand and I, you know, they have their, like even President Obama, he's a lefty. The way they hold the pen and write, I was like, oh my goodness, all I needed to do is just your parents to be a little bit more proactive and switch you to the right hand with your kid and you will not have this weird way of writing things. And actually I remember there was a little bit of the shock for me when I came to the United States as seeing people write in this funny way with the left hand because I don't remember anyone writing with the left hand back in Soviet Union because every kid was switched to the right hand with the help of teacher and a parent with the ruler sitting at home. And here, it's kind of funny, this page is my another bad grade, another two, the Voika I got. And the only way I can explain it, I had a brain fart. So I had this homework, practicing handwriting, and I needed to write a lot of uh, words with the letter E, or we say in Russian, yeah, but it looks like English E. And for some reason, as I said, I had a brain fart. I was putting letter E instead of E. So all these words were with the mistake, except uh, my mom's name, Yelena. Yelena wrote it correctly, E Yel. Otherwise, I made it all wrong and I got the bad grade. So this is another, <laughs> uh, my second probably, because I was a good pupil generally, but this is my second bad grade in the first um, grade of school. And here's one of my uh, notepads, Titratka for math. And it's also first grade. And I think I had several of them, but this is the one I found. So this is towards the end of the year, April 2nd. And remember I mentioned in my previous video, if you watched it, that 
I think we had way more homeworks and just generally way more advanced studying uh, in Soviet school compared to what I see here in America. So this is a first grade, seven year old kids. Um, as you see, we are already uh, dealing with unknown numbers, axes. So my homework, you see like class, we had class na работа, which is work at class in school. So you see like 15 minus x equals six, and then you find what x was, and then you write again the whole uh, task. And then another question here, task about uh, helicopters. So there were eight helicopters and some left unknown X and only three remained on the field. So how many helicopters left? And I found the answer five. So this is first grade homeworks. I'll just kind of uh, show you several shots. And of course, this, there's already distances. I'm comparing what is more seven centimeters or 10 centimeters. So this is the first grade uh, comrades. So I think what comparing was I saw with my kids, we were doing the first grade and my kids here in America were doing in the third grade. And of course, teacher gives you grades here and uh, also if he doesn't like, if it's not clean, don't stay in lines. Uh, so they will write comments about it. So this is how the math looked in the first grade uh, in Soviet schools. And now let's take a look at the tabel. Um, as one of my viewers commented, uh, we can translate it as a scorecard. So in the end of the year, well, actually we've been using that during the whole year, but this is your report of your uh, scores for the year. So we had four quarters, right? And I'm not sure why I don't have any grades for the second quarter. Maybe our teacher was sick, for some reason it's missing. But on the cover, again, it's on Russian language, although it's Ukrainian schools, and it's printed for Ukraine because it has a, the Ministry of Education of Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. And there are also rules here on the left that the uh, tabel is supposed to be filled in, filled up by the, your uh, class manager. In the end of each quarter, the class manager is supposed to give this uh, tabel, this scorecard, to the pupil, and then it needs to come back to school on the first day of next quarter with the signature of the parent and the tabel is supposed to be kept in school. Uh, and there's that point number three, so it's actually talking about what grades you get in. So you got uh, five, four, three, two, and one. Although as I mentioned, I rarely seen ones. Uh, two is already bad enough, two you already failed. One is like failed pathetically. And also your Behavior, поведение, had three levels. Primerne, which is excellent. Then you got удовлетворительное, which is okay. And неудовлетворительное, which is failed. And in the end of the year, school year, tabel, the scorecard was all, all filled in and with the signature of the school director of the school and a stamp supposed to be given to the pupil and to the parents. But as you see, they skipped and I didn't get a signature of the director of the school or the stamp. And so let's take a look at the grades. So see what uh, uh, kids in key of Ukraine, uh, in Soviet Ukraine, were studying in the first grade. So we got Russian language, Russian literature, and we had Ukrainian language, no Ukrainian literature, just Ukrainian language, and math. And you see this uh, this scorecard kind of pre-printed for uh, several different grades. So there's a bunch of subjects which we didn't study, but they're ready for the different, uh, so if people go to like seventh grade or eighth grade, they'll get other subjects. Then we had изобразительное uh, искусство, which is like arts, and more like colorings and drawing pictures. You got music, physical education, and the labor education. And then you have your behavior, PR, here, primarily means excellent, 
signatures of the teacher on the bottom and my parents' teacher. So this is the first grade. Now this one is the second grade. The difference is now we have on the top of Ukrainian language, we also have Ukrainian literature, still have math. Then we added Prirodovedenie, which is kind of like a basic biology, but it's general like you start talking about trees and rain and weather, Prirodovedenie. Then you still have um, your arts, music, physical education, and uh, that's it. So this is the second grade. And now this one is the third grade I got. So the third grade, it was 1980, 1981. So this is around time when uh, Reagan got elected, right? Because for some reason I remember when I lived still in the old apartment, I remember uh, Cold War, and I was kind of happy that uh, Carter lost and Reagan became a president of the United States because it, for some reason, I thought it was gonna uh, change the co cancel the Cold War and it'll be peaceful life, and that didn't happen. It's very, we all remember. So not much change comparing with the previous years. In, it's just. A, name changed so instead of Priroda um, Vedenia here the name is Chest Vaznania but I think it's also like a general knowledge about nature and stuff so this is uh, so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine total of ten subjects that we studied as a kids in the third uh, grade and I said from first to third grade we had only one teacher who was also our class manager and this is the lady who handled a total of 41 kids. Well, uh, this is the end of my show. I hope you enjoy the program. I always appreciate you uh, putting likes and uh, please ask questions because it will help me to create uh, new videos on this topic. So anything you think I didn't cover, you want to learn some more, uh, please let me know and we will see you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.